All right, so once you have the model, uh, once you get the model from the link down below in the description, uh, you want to load it up. Uh, what? All right, you want to add it to your thing. And then um, just open this, read this. Um, I mean, you don't need to because you're watching the video, but um, so just move this to the to this to here. And uh, it, you can see that it initially shows you the UI, but once you play the game, it's not going to show you the UI. It's going to just hide the UI, uh, the little display thing. But if you don't like it here, you can just click this and then go to your properties tab. Um, I don't have my properties tab open, so I'm going to go open that with uh, by going to view and then properties. And then you can just set the frame to uh, just check off visible. Right, and then this is a quick test to see show you guys how it looks. Um, right now I have the jump cooldown to two seconds, so when I jump, yeah, every two seconds I can jump. I'm holding down the space bar right now, so uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's how that looks like. Um, if you have your own like jump icon, you can just change that by going to the image label and then changing the image to whatever your jump uh, decal ID is. Um, uh, but yeah, that's that's really it. Um, if you want a quick explanation on how it works, you can stay. If not, you can just uh, click off the video. All right, so inside of the settings configuration, I have a script called Jump, uh, jump Cooldown Version 2. Um, and we're going to go through this and so you guys know how this works. So the main thing that we're doing is that we're setting, uh, we're like switching off and on the jumping Cuminoid state type. Okay, so that's what we're really doing. Uh, let me run through this. So this is going to be the first uh, constant. Uh, this is just going to be the cooldown. If you want cooldown to last one second, you can put one second. If you want it to last five seconds, you put five seconds. If you want it to last 1.5 seconds, you can put 1.5 seconds. I'm going to leave it at two. Um, this is just the player service, run service. This is what we're going to be using to connect the loop that displays the... Uh, that displays the... The actual cooldown uh, label, right? Um, the client is basically player. Um, I people normally type in player, but I just type client because uh, I don't know. Uh, and then we have rig, and then humanoid. So rig is also just character. Um, you can just uh, people normally put character, but I just put rig because I don't know. And then we have humanoid. Um, this is how we're going to be changing the humanoid state type. Um, the main frame, these three variables just reference uh, these three things. Main frame references this frame, um, image label, um, this one. I probably spelled label wrong. No, I didn't. Okay. And then the cooldown label is this one right here. Um, so this one, yeah, so this one uh, lets you know uh, whether or not we can jump. Because sometimes uh, the, the state thing can fire more than once, and we want to make sure it only does it once. So we have a um a, a boolean uh sentinel thing all right so then we also have the countdown connection um this is going to uh, be the the rbx script connection so the connection that holds the run service loop uh that displays the text okay so we have two functions here um we have the on state function which we're going to connect to the humanoid uh state change event and then we have the enable countdown display which basically just enables the uh the frame and then displays the countdown so i'm going to go to i'm going to explain this one first so this one it says the function enables and disables the player jumping state um we have two uh sentinels right here so if so this event state change um fires when the state changes there's like a whole bunch of different states if you look at humanoid state uh um if you look at this humanoid state type, right? See, we have a whole bunch of different states. We have jumping, um, none, ragdoll, running, free fall, landed, falling down, like a whole bunch of different states, right? So it's important that we make sure that we only handle the jumping state. Uh, I might do an another video on like uh, fall damage where I use the free fall, landed, and all these other states, but right now we're only focusing on the jumping state. Okay, so since there's a whole bunch of different uh, state types, we want to make sure we only do this for the jumping state. So we have this condition that says, if the state is not equal to the jumping state, then we return end. So we, we would return out the function and we won't proceed to do anything else under here. So this, 
just makes it so that we don't run this more than once in case um, this event fires like multiple times for one jump. Okay. All right, cool. And then we have, um, we start off by disabling the jump. So we make sure we set the, the debounce boolean to false. And then after that, um, we do, we disable the jumping state, meaning that um, we can't jump again if you press spacebar within this time frame, right? Um, and then after that, we call this function enable countdown display. This is just uh, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go over this function later, but this one um, just displays the 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 GUI or the countdown frame. And then after waiting this amount of seconds, after waiting this amount of seconds, uh, we. Um, enable the jumping state again, allowing the, the player to jump. And then we set can jump to true. All right. So I'm going to explain the countdown uh, display function now. So it says this function displays the countdown duration and hides the UI after the cooldown is over. Right. So here um, we have a little safeguard uh, thing where make sure it disconnects any running connections just in case there's some sort of glitch where it would have two loops playing at the same time so we'll make sure it disconnects it if there is one um and then this is going to be the, the loop sentinel it's gonna be like the loop uh the loop the variables that control the loop okay uh, normally you can do loops like this for i equals one uh, i uh, for i equals one to a hundred do but I just prefer using uh, run service loops. So uh, we're going to be using the run service render step loop. Uh, if you want to read more on that, I'll uh, send a link to that on the dev form in the description of this video. All right. So it says a uh, countdown display. So, okay. So we start off by first um, setting the initial cooldown, uh, setting the text property of the initial cooldown. So this uh, string dot format thing, all this does is that it makes sure that it converts any number to a, a decimal number to the tenth uh, place. So if I put in two, if cooldown is two, it will make it um, two point zero instead of two. That's all this line does. So we're changing the text of the cooldown label to um, the decimal version of the cooldown. And then this is where we would do that the run service loop. So um what this is right here so we're since the lapse is zero we're gonna add uh delta time so the the parameter that comes from this run service loop is uh the change in time per frame i think again you can just read more about this on the dev form i don't really feel like explaining this but um this this whole part right here this this whole thing right here basically just um make sure that this loops every 0.1 second Okay, making sure, um, making, sh oh my good lord, so making sure we loop every 0.1 second, right, and now we're, we're going to reduce, reduce the cooldown by 0.1 and display, and replicate, display the cooldown text, okay, so that's what these two does. This one makes sure that makes sure that the loop is running every point one seconds. Without this part, it would just like run a million times a second. No, not a million times. It'll run sixty times a second because uh, it's sixty frames per second, so it runs sixty times a second. So this one is needed to make sure that we run every point one second. Okay, and then here is where we just reduce the cooldown by point one, and then we display it to the text label. Um. After connecting the loop, we're going to enable the the frame uh, so the player can actually see the UI. And then we're going to wait um, uh, the cooldown duration. So we're going to do task.delay. Task.delay basically just it like waits in the background and then runs whatever function that you connect to it. So we're going to wait two seconds. We're going to delay two seconds, right? And then we're going to disconnect the 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 loop connection and then we're gonna make make the frame invisible again 
So that's all this does. And then at the very bottom, we connect the the state change um, function to the state change event. And then we, we start off by initially making the frame invisible. Um, that's pretty much it. Let me double check to make sure it works. I might override the current model with this one since it has more comments. Yeah, cool. Uh, so that's it. Um, this video was requested by this person right here. Uh, so, yeah, that's why I'm doing a second version of this. Uh, if this video helped you guys, please leave a like down below the uh, video thing. Uh, comment if there's any problems and help me reach 10,000 followers. Uh, follow my account or not. I, I don't I don't know.